Well, let's continue the party here. Uh, we have another uh, great partner coming up uh, in, in Twistlock, and I don't want to bury the lead, but uh, I think they've got some awesome stuff to show you, so I'm going to pass it along um, to Patrick, who's going to show us uh, some great stuff from a Twistlock perspective. Thank, thank you for the intro. Uh, so I'm from Twistlock. Uh, my name's Patrick Maddox. I run the solutions architecture team there. Uh, before I joined Twistlock, uh, I built solutions engineering and services at a company called Puppet. Um, and then did a bunch of different stuff at a managed service provider, provider called Verizon, uh, which is also a very large telecom. Um, we're going to cover, uh, mostly focus on Fargate today, um, although Twistlock does provide a full suite of uh, security services for all of your AWS workloads. Whether it's EC2 or EKS um, or Lambda or Fargate, we're going to cover all of it. Um, but we're really today going to focus on securing your Fargate applications at runtime. <clears throat> and we're going to sort of start by talking out about two approaches to security at runtime for Fargate. Um, and then we're going to go into a little bit of Twistlock's Fargate runtime protection. Um, and then uh, through that, I'll show you a demo. Um, so just sort of a quick primer on Fargate and kind of the stuff we're going to cover. Um, Fargate's a service offered by Amazon. Um, it allows you to really just worry about deploying your containers, not worry about the infrastructure underneath. Um, I think as we saw through the demo earlier, um, you can use all the assets that AWS uh, supplies and just really worry about um, running your container workload. Um, you only really need to deploy the infrastructure capable of supporting that workload in terms of, a resource, uh, in terms of resourcing. Um, and if you're familiar with Elastic Container Service, it's going to feel very familiar. You use a lot of the same artifacts and constructs. It, it flows very nicely. Um, so let's talk about some of the ways you can secure Fargate applications. Um, and this is a, a small component of, of how Twistlock works. Um, but ultimately, when it comes to securing Fargate applications, you're dealing with a slightly different paradigm than you would in um, what would typically be traditional security. Um, Fargate doesn't necessarily present security challenges, but you have to approach the problem of security a little bit differently. Um, you are working from a place of lowered privilege. Um, because you don't have access to the underlying infrastructure, it's much more difficult to secure it because you can't run at that, that higher privilege level that typically agents require in order to provide security. Um, you still have the obligation of full lifecycle security, so you still need to patch your containers and their images, really the images, upstream within your CI system, so you need a tool that has visibility across all of that. Um, you can scan those images upstream, but what are you going to do to protect those workloads at runtime? Run and we're really finding that many of our customers are using Fargate, but they also have other uh, AWS-centric workloads that they're running. They're, they're running virtual machines in EC2, they're running uh, uh, Kubernetes via EKS, um, uh, they're running ECS clusters. Um, so they're really, most of our customers are looking for a tool that covers the variety of those workloads, allows you to approach security holistically throughout the CI pro pipeline and kind of move workloads around across those various assets. Um, and really what we're trying to do here is we're trying to protect against known uh, and unknown attacks. And kind of classically known attacks fall into the, the, the category of vulnerabilities. Um, unknown attacks um, really start dealing with aberrant behavior across a, a running workload. Um, and Twistlock protects against both of those. There are two main approaches to security um, in a Fargate world. Um, and we're going to cover both of them at a high level. There's some pros and cons to each of them. The first approach um, takes the form of embedding an agent. Um, this approach is where you include everything you need um, inside the container image to make it available when running. So you're effectively embedding your security inside the image. Um, there is a downside here. Um, it, there's actually a couple downsides, but the first downside um, is that anybody can modify that image and strip out the security layer you, you, you put in there. Um, sometimes this can happen intentionally, sometimes this can happen um, absently, so someone didn't just forgot to add it or didn't update it. Um, there's an operational sort of development downside here as well. Um, you've now sort of complicated your image, sort of reduced it um, or added to it, um, taken away from the most sort of pure form of that image, the sort of minimal workload it's supposed to do, by bundling in security at images. And it means also to achieve security, you have to add security in as a layer for every single image. So you're modifying every single one of your images, which somewhat makes them less portable. 
Um, Twistlock's approach is different. Um, for Fargate, we load the agent at runtime. Um, we load it from a sidecar container. Um, the sidecar approach doesn't make you uh, embed anything in the image. You can keep your application condensed to its sort of single purpose. Um, all of the security capabilities you need, including the model, are mounted from the sidecar container. Um, and security can be decided by your security team. Um, it's deployed uh, with the application, but not within it. Um, and you don't need really to change your images. Um, they stay fit for purpose. So the next thing I'm gonna go into is a demo. Um, and just kind of step you through what you should expect. We're gonna build a basic runtime policy um, specifically for, for, for Fargate and Twistlock. Um, we're gonna take one of the Fargate tasks that we already have already created and we're gonna look at the JSON. Um, we're then gonna secure that task and deploy that task into a cluster and then exploit it. And we'll see the output within the Twistlock console. It's demo time. Let me go ahead and minimize this. What we're looking at right here is one of my demo environments. Um, and you can see the full sort of life cycle, um, all the different capabilities within Twistlock. Um, you know, the ability to manage vulnerabilities and compliance, the ability to provide runtime protection for everything else, the ability to automatically map out your infrastructure. Um, what we're gonna focus on is a slightly different, more condensed, um, very focused approach to Fargate. Um, and as I step through what you should expect, we're gonna start with, I'm gonna zoom it in a little bit so you can see a little bit of it. We're gonna start with adding a policy. And when we add a policy, we're just gonna name it. Uh, we're gonna call it ecosystem day. Uh, we're gonna change some of the policy attributes. Uh, we're not gonna explicitly allow or deny processes within uh, the Fargate uh, container. You absolutely can, but we're not going to here do that here. What we're really gonna do is just, we wanna make sure that no binaries run inside this task that weren't part of the original image. And so we're gonna turn on prevent. Um, and then we're just gonna leave it like that. We're not gonna do anything else. That's what we've created our policy, very straightforward. You, of course, can create these policies via API. Everything you're seeing actually right now is just a thin wrapper around our API. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to actually deploy that task. And when it comes down to deploying a task, we're gonna select Fargate as the defender. Now, the defender is the element that provides the protection for customer infrastructure. Um, and so we're gonna take one of our, we're gonna take our, our task JSON. Um, this is one that I had already created. We're gonna copy it. Then we're just gonna put this in the API. We're gonna generate a protected task. We're gonna copy that protected task. We're gonna go over and create a new task definition for Fargate. Let's scroll down a little bit. We're actually gonna use the configuration via JSON that was mentioned earlier. I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna put that task in there. And again, all this can be driven by the API, but I'm showing it to you in the graphical interface so you get an idea of what it looks like. We're gonna save it, and then we're gonna create our task. Let's go look at that task definition, and let's go ahead and run a task off of it. We're not gonna to need to do a bunch of configuration here. We're simply gonna give it a, a subnet, and we're gonna instantiate it. And while that churns, and while uh, Fargate takes care of building out that workload, uh, we're gonna start diving into it. All right, so I've got my IP address that I want to connect to and exploit. I'm going to connect to it, and I'm going to pause for just one second while that workload spins up. It takes a couple seconds for it to start, but I can see it has started. I'm going to create a shell. I'm going to go ahead and see I'm inside the container. I'm gonna go over to temp. I'm gonna bring down an exploitable binary. It's not actually an exploitable binary, it's just a hello world app, but for our purposes, it'll, it'll serve to show you what I'm talking about. Up, oh, I hit the wrong button. Unfortunately, what I feared happened did happen. We're gonna go ahead and run one more like this. 
and that's because I fat fingered, because we're using Netcat. So while this gets spun up, instead of trying to type with a broken wrist, what I'm going to do this time is just cut and paste. Okay, so we've got our task spun up. And while this task spins up, I apologize, just one more second. Okay, I'm connected. I'm gonna go over to my scratch pad here. There's nothing in temp. I'll go ahead and pull down my evil binary. We're gonna chmod it. And then we're gonna attempt to exploit it. And what we'll see is permission denied. And if we go ahead and look at the Twistlock console, we'll go ahead and see what happened. Scroll up a little bit, I can go ahead and see the output from that. And we're gonna look at the Fargate audits. And you can see that we tried to launch the slash temp slash evil binary. Um, Twistlock did not allow that to run because it wasn't part of the original, uh, the original binary set. Um, and this is just a small example of the type of protection you can get from, for Fargate workloads, specifically with Twistlock. Um, and that concludes the demo. Awesome, thank you so much, Patrick. I think that was a, a super great demo. Uh, so Tiffany, what are, your, what are your thoughts on what you just saw? I get to ask you this first this time. Oh, I get to share my, th my thoughts first. So perfect. So I, I actually loved what I, what I saw here. And I see especially, I think one sort of nuance that folks may not understand about Fargate is Fargate really raises the level of abstraction uh, well above the infrastructure. So there's no notion of nodes or kernels or operating systems or anything that the customer really has to worry about. So the fact that uh, things are loaded via a sidecar in a, in a running task is, a, uh, is an important uh, nuance and something that's really important uh, to the architecture of how we, th how we think with Twistlock and other partners uh, that security is evolving. So I really like that, that detail uh, of the solution. Yeah, I think it's a really good way to actually be able to interact with everything. And like with EC2, you can go like SSH into instance, throw things on there, but with Fargate, we handle all those types of things for you, so then having another way of being able to go and manage that type of stuff is pretty convenient. Perfect, perfect. So um, so thanks to Twistlock uh, for, for showing the demo. I think we have uh, an additional uh, demo coming up uh, with um, uh, Kashif from Aqua, 